the national anthem. In secondary school, uh, government by uh, a gentleman who happened to be part of the team that wrote the national anthem. His name was Mr. Dirty Um he, That was a privilege, so I think I should show that. I thought I should show that, show that in there. Uh, yes. Um, our welcome address, of course, for tonight will be by none other than Big Sis. Mrs. June Douglas. A round of applause for her. You don't need a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to this great event. As you all know, the book launch is for this beautiful book called The Black Leather. We hope that uh, you will have a good evening. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, I know that we've all come from different places, from work and everything around this place. Thank you for coming. I hope you have a good time today. Um, as you all know, uh, we've got three places to see. There's a fire, I think. That's it. It all goes down that way. And we also have the toilet that way. Thank you very much. A round of applause for all. She's done a run now. Okay, um, we have in our presence um, Mrs. Michelle Akintoye. She's uh, our moderator tonight. So a round of applause for all. Now you've got So, with a resounding round of applause, and please, let us be standing, be upstanding as we do it, as we give Mr. Ayo Akefe a resounding round of applause.
and small islands were set in the 1950s and 60s when Caribbean migrants came to the UK after World War II. They spoke about the challenges and difficulties they faced, how they had a problem getting jobs, getting houses, settling into society. A lot of the time, they would go to look for apartments and there would be signs up saying, no kids, no dogs, no blacks. And that was what they had to face. No Irish, yes. <laughs> now, fortunately, we've come a long, long way from that. Nobody faces that kind of overt racism today. But there are still a lot of challenges. A lot of us are people who could excel to a lot, we could excel a lot, lot more than we do at the moment. But we face certain hurdles. And what made me write this book and title it Black Ladder was that the, the actual demographics have changed. There are now more Africans in the UK than Caribbeans. So we are the largest, the Nigerian community the largest African community. So we're the largest black community in the UK. So we tend to be the focus. We tend to be the central point. And given our very, very robustious and aggressive nature, Nigerians don't want to be kept that. Nobody wants to be a cleaner all their life. Nobody wants to be a, um, you know, a, a lot of underground stuff all their life. A lot of you here, I'm sure you can relate to this, were graduates. I mean, the central character in the book is a chap called Suji Mustafa, a, a Nigerian graduate. And I'm sure this probably echoes with a lot of you here. You came here as graduates, but what did you have to do? You maybe have to start off working at McDonald's. You know, and you then work your way up. You face all sorts of challenges, but you said, you know what? No, I'm not going to do this. I want to do better. I want to work for the Crown Prosecution Service. Or I want to work for, you know, the city, the back, or whatever it is. And you've managed to overcome all those hurdles. So, Black Matter is essentially taking us through the life of a Nigerian migrant, the struggles he faced. And it ends with him actually becoming a director of a city bank, uh, at which I'm sure if you look around as we mentioned now, it, it would echo the lives of a lot of people, a lot of successful Nigerians who are, who are earning 80, 100, 200 grand. They probably started off doing a cleaning job or a McDonald's job. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the read. Uh, I did have to speed up the production over the last few weeks because it was my birthday and I wanted to have it on my birthday. And again, um, I'll just finish with this. Um, we Nigerians are very, very renowned for our parties and our lago lagos. And I said to myself, <laughs> you know, it's my birthday. We talk about, we don't like being stereotyped, but then whenever you have to have a birthday, you just have a big party. And I said, you know what, I'm not going to do that. Let's have an intellectual discussion. Let's have something, let's elevate the level of debate a bit. So I sped up the production, and I made sure the book was out. Got delivered on Saturday. A certain Mrs. Rocha Rosia was on my doorstep within an hour of it arriving <laughs> to become the first person to collect a copy. Uh, <laughs> but um, I'm glad it's out. It's here. I hope you enjoyed the read, and um, I look forward to reading your reviews. Thank you very much. <laughs> Life and time of a Nigerian or African man. Well, wonderful story. I'm sure that would be. Can't wait to read the book. So please, another resounding round of applause to our wonderful tall author. Um, you just mentioned handsome. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm <laughs> Thank you. Well, um, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. No, you shouldn't. No, <laughs> She was ready to fight me. Yes, um, of course. We've got um, a round table discussion uh, to be moderated by Mrs. Michelle Akintoye. Um, it's the future of Britain's African community in the post-Brexit era. 
So a round of applause for Mrs. Catherine Tullier. We want opportunity to kind of 
take advantage of all the things that are there. For. So we need to be thinking about how we're going to come together, use Brexit as an opportunity to step up, to move. We've done trade and investment, two trade and investment in, in Parliament. The purpose of that is to open doors to businesses in, the, in here, UK businesses, to start coming in and look for how we're going to you know, put our business into the central government in the UK and in Nigeria government and make our own money. So we don't do, we don't have to go through, our children don't have to go through what this gentleman in black, black ladder go through. That's my short um, overview of uh, where we are within this, within this setting. So I would like to, I'm not on my own and I'm, I'm meant to be a moderator. So I think that it's time for me to hand over back to the MC so we can get the rest of the speakers into the panel and we get the ball rolling because there's a lot to be discussed. But I can assure you this is not the end of it. Black Ladder is going places and we need to start thinking about our place within the Brexit. Remain or no remain, we need to come together. We're looking for stability. 2008 was a big crash. If you have a mortgage, you have everything, things went down. All because we thought we had a government that could help to sustain us. I need people that lost mortgages, I need people that lost businesses. We don't want to go back to that. So we need to be looking at how we can do what, step up, Forget about follow of our government. Stability, financial stability is what we need right now, isn't it? So we need to support this May to get to get things going and to push on. That's my state. So um handing over to the MC and to get the rest of the um, the speakers so we can have a debate about that. Thank you. Big sis, I love her very much. Jenny Okafo. Would you like to come on the high table? Please? You can keep the applause going. Yeah. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm very humble, but I need to make clear I'm no longer the president. Susan oh. Fadjana Thomas is the president. I was the former president. Oh, okay. Thanks. Keep, keep the applause going, yes. so I can also reply. <laughs> As I also invite to the um, table in front of us here, um, the chairman, <clears throat> Nigerian Direct Diaspora Investment Summit, and that is none other than Chief himself, Chief Bimbo Robert Falayon. Okay. Um, may I also invite? Um, one okay. Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, may I invite Mrs. Jenny Okapo to give us yeah, 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 to give us our take on the topic of discussion. Please keep applauding. Mr. David Smith is the chairman of the British African Business Alliance. A round of applause for him. Of course, we're still expecting uh, Miss Pauline Long. We're still expecting 
Mr. Alistair, show your day. We're still expecting, of course, Mrs. Susan Fajinal Thomas. Um, and of course, Matthew Penny Cook, of course. Uh, thank you very much. And um, over to you. Okay. Um, this is going to be a Because if we had remained, we'd be sitting comfortably. We've got our great big market right here on our doorstep. And we don't have to do anything else, really. Sell a bit more, that would be nice. But we're comfortable. And what's happened uh, is illustrated by one of our members who runs a uh, manufacturing company down in, in, in Bristol. And I saw him just after Christmas. And he said, David, I just had to do the profit uh, share with the staff and the end of year speech and all the rest of that. I did it last night. Now, some of these guys voted to leave. But they don't know where their bread is buttered. 50% of our sales are in Europe. We're working with you because we want to balance out the 50% that is in Europe and find new markets from Africa especially to take this forward. And that set my mind thinking. Is it an opportunity? He's not going to open an office in Africa. He's not going to offer, open a music. He's not even going to get on a plane to Lagos. But he wants to sell more in Africa. And my mind just kept working and working and working and working. And gentlemen and ladies, it's on your doorstep. There are thousands of British companies sitting out there on the industrial estates near where you live who are looking for new markets. You need to go and meet them. There's a thought.
we used to have a scheme they called um, the special, um, the highly skilled migrant worker that went because of uh, you know, the opening of the borders. But right now, what they used to do was to bring in very highly talented Africans and then export them. The only thing we need to do, like Michelle said, is to actually make sure that we get rid of this mentality where you are from the north, you're from the south, you're from the east, you're Kenya, you're Uganda, we are all Africans. Most times when people ask me where I come from, I don't say, I just say, I'm African. I, you go out there and find out, you know, I'm from Africa. It doesn't really matter where I come from. What you should be looking at is my, uh, my, uh, my skill and my experience, am I able to deliver on the job? Because if you go to America, America doesn't care about where you come from. What they care about is what you can do. So we need to begin to look at ourselves as part of this society. There should be no more match them and us. We are needed, they are needed, everybody is needed. So we need to come together and begin to retool for those of us who have given up and say, oh well, you know, this system is against us and all of that. You need to get rid of that mentality. Because if Obama could actually overcome all the odds and said, I can't, all of us can. So it's a question of, uh, of us having a mindset reorientation. We need to begin to integrate because the trouble we face as well is that many of us have lived here for so many years, but we're still thinking Africa. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. But in order to actually survive and make the difference you want to make in Africa, you need to begin to have your root here. And when the root and foundation is solid, Whatever you want to do, you can do. Like David said, now there is this 50% hanging around because the, the trade uh, things are going to go back to Europe. We're not going to trade with them the way we used to. Why don't we all uh, pull together cooperatives, work together, find out what our skills and talents are, and then be able to engage and say, look, you don't need to worry. We've got what you need to tell us what it is, and then we'll bring it together. So for me, it's, um, it could be a blessing in disguise. I never supported it. If you ask me, I still don't support it because I've got comfortable being where I am. But what I want to do now is to make the best of the situation we have found ourselves, and I know we can do it. Thank you very much. Now, my position is, 
as a black community, particularly as a Nigerian community, David spoke as a Lagos boy and now British <laughs> But I'm going to speak like a uh, black African. My position, and in Nigeria particularly, my position is that regardless of the situation, we've had an, a referendum, we should go with it. We should prepare our mind to, the, to where we are right now. And now, I need to mention that one of the major problems we have as a community, just like Jenny said, is that we, we live in the UK with a mindset of Africa. So as long as when we move out of this office and you get to another street, you have to look at the way they move around in that street and adjust your movement. If you gyrate in a different way, then you're not going to be able to get what they get around that area. And I think that is a major problem we have within the African community. For me, I think we're properly ready. We're well placed to take advantage of, the, of Brexit. And I'll tell you why. There are so many opportunities that are now open to us as uh, a black African community that we're not looking at because we have a mindset of Africa. There are many of us who are still with the mindset of the black ladder, you know, what's the character in this book that started as a cleaner and then is thinking that somebody is discriminating against them, which does not exist in most cases. Because I've passed through some of the, actually, if there's anybody that has worked in so many organizations, I think I'll count myself as one, because there was a time I was doing three months, six months contracts in different companies. And there was a time that my CV was 14 pages long. <laughs> because I had three months, and within the last 20 years, I've worked in so many companies. So I know about the culture within the uh, work circle in, in this country. To the effect that if you are good, honestly, nothing can hold you back. That's the reality. <laughs> if you are good, there's nothing can hold you back. Now, yesterday, a so-called Nigerian guy who doesn't have a Nigerian name, won a, won a, uh, won a boxing match yeah, yeah. by knockout. So what we're supposed to be delivering in this country is knockout, actually. <laughs> Not <laughs> exactly, we're supposed to be doing more than we're doing. And we are better placed now with Brexit. With Brexit, in about 10 years' time, I can guarantee you many of you, if you go back to Nigeria, by the time you come here, you'll be shocked at what you will see in this country because Nigerian kids are doing so well. I'm talking about our children. Our children are doing so, I don't want to talk about this generation now, because people in this room are probably in 30s, 40s, or 50s. But I'm talking about the 20s, those who are coming up. They are the new kids on the block. Yes. And they are the ones that we need to lay a solid foundation for. Our own role as a community is just to work together, and work better together, reduce our tension within our community, reduce the fighting. Let's start to bring ourselves together and encourage the, children, uh, the young ones to go for all the opportunities that are all over the, all over the place. And I will rest my case for now. Thank you very much. Okay. 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 Black the Black Ladder, this is the unspoken, the eating out, stuck against the black prison in the British private sector. This 1,000 word book exposes the reality behind all the issues that we rhetoric about the equal opportunity black power, black empowerment, and straight position. Like most other black professionals, she defined how what, whether you get a job or not. And I think it's still the same issue for all of us to But in light of all that, I will have a bit of uh, view in, in terms of how we can limit ourselves. Just like Dr. Gimbo said, I'm going to support the view. You are who you are, regardless of race, gender, color. You have to push on. I say, I, I've been given a bit of a funny name. She takes me for an answer. If I need something, I will knock till I get it. And trust me, when I mean knock, you go, yeah, you hear that. I mean, Mrs. May, any cabinet minister knows whether I want something, what do you want eventually to give it to us? So I think that's what we need to do. That's the kind of thing we need to build into yeah. our children. Yeah. You know, the 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 um the resilience to fight on once you get the answers. Yeah. And don't not in an aggressive way, in a very diplomatic way and strategic way. Put things in writing. I asked for this, I said that, I mean this, and I want that. You know, when is it going to happen? And they started the people's job. That's how things work. 
uh, there's no magical way about it. You you will get go away. We don't have we don't do this right now. We'll do it later. You tell them no, actually I've done my research. The research said this is what we need at this moment, and you can't push it away unless you don't you want your you know won't say that but you know. <laughs> We're all logical, we're very intelligent. Niger I was told that Nigerian, and it's not told, I knew from my parents and my grandparents' generation were the most intelligent people in the world. And that's one of the reasons why we, we are, we don't even want to try to mess with Nigerians. So let's use our uh, intellectual ability to empower our children. Father, empower your, your, your girls, your daughter. What, I'm, what, what I am today is my father, because I know that he knows I don't. He, teach me, he teaches me all the, all the skills that I have, the expertise that I have right now. So make, you know, not a CC life. I was born in between boys. I wear their trousers when they get when they get to when they get too old for them. There wasn't anything about dress. Yeah, dress on Sunday. So I'm using this to tell us that we need to push on and don't take yeah, um, no for an answer. That's that's my technique. And I would like to kind of hear from um, my lovely ah. So yes, again we have another high. Um, all of us are all high profile. This is a discussion and it's an open. We all is we all on the same level as we are today. So there's no but. We have someone that is capable of contributing yes. to this discussion. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Michelle. Um, we have the, the director um, of Bay Television Resources on the high table, Alistair Shulibe, in our presence. So, can you please um, give him a round of applause? Probably because I'm a politician from the other people too. <laughs> I think I'm a, I'll be a bit of a killjoy. I've got some. And the Everyone reason why I'm going to every political position. And the reason I'm going to be a killjoy will be because I was one of the people that really campaigned to remain in the EU with every situation that are challenges and there are benefits. I do believe where we are if tomorrow listen to me if tomorrow we happen to leave the EU because up till this moment I don't believe we actually believe in the EU. If you listen to the if you listen to the president of the EU yesterday, there, there was a uh, uh, there was statement quoted to him saying that Theresa May she is deluded. And I believe many of the people that are negotiating for EU, they are deluded for there are different things that will happen. Two things will happen to EU negotiation. It's either in the next two years we get to a point where we can exit, or we don't get to a point where we can exit, and that referendum and our divorce will be passed. And some of us that still continue to campaign to remain, that's what we are hoping for. And we are hoping that will happen. But having said that, <laughs> That is my personal opinion, and having said that, that's not just about me. Many people around the country, even people that voted to remain, uh, to exit, to leave the uh, 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 EU, that are not uh, well uh, informed before they cast their vote, they're now regretting. Why did we do this? We don't know if this will happen, if that will happen. Can I just take a, a, an example of what I'm saying? The UK was due to receive about 5.3 billion in European Union structural funds between 2014 and 2020. How many of us have um, a, a charity organization or community interest group here? Thank you. 
most of the funding we are getting, and I'm talking as somebody in the governance, in local authority, most of the uh, uh, funding local authority are using to support uh, local or uh, charitable organization come from EU fund. And there has been speculation that the government, that's our government will take that up when we exit Euro. How they will do that, I'm not sure of it. When what we are when we are hearing is that the austerity measure will continue. Uh, or I'm not too sure if people are aware that our economy, David is here, you know better more, that our economy actually slowed down in the in the in the in the report that was due this week. So there are issues around EU, but having said that, like I said before, in any situation there are challenges and there are opportunity as or, or people of African descent, I hope we can grab the opportunity that if, if we exit EU, that will create for us. And as of now, together with some of the people that I know, we've got about 150 questions for the government to answer, which we actually give us where we're going to be when we exit EU. There are opportunity, the opportunity are there for us to grab, but I don't believe um, I stand to be corrected that any opportunity that we are looking at will actually happen in the next five, ten years. Probably I will agree with you, being, but might be <laughs> sorry, I'm a politician. I was <laughs> might be <laughs> for as mentioned for the uh, of the youth, our second generation, people that are coming. Uh, behind us so that they have the opportunity to grow within uh, outside the EU <coughs> and having uh, since I've lived in this country for over 27 years all I've known has been to be within Europe so maybe that's why I'm finding the difficult but all uh, uh, as at this point in time all evidence prove that it's not going to be an easy ride. And that's where I'm coming from. I just want to manage our expectation, not just to carry away that the opportunity out there. There are opportunity for the challenges. The road will be tough. Thank you. Did you notice that when um, the mayor, the ex-mayor said that he can have to open up the wine. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> you know, so, eh? You didn't see that camera? Oh, don't do that to me. So, I was expecting that. But, and with passion, like, it's funny, every one of us seems to be on the remake. We have to look for um, uh, an exit, not someone that won the exit, because in a way, we, we seem to be on the same boat. But like I said, I'm managing my feelings. <laughs> the feelings have to be put aside. We are on the same boat. <laughs> we have to be on the same boat because there is no alternative. We're going, so we need to bring forward everything that is going to help us. I mean, some people need to be bailing. Some people need to be bailing out the water. Thank you so much for actually hitting the nail on the head for me. So those very values that have led us to for over 70 years of consistency and counting on the presidential level of peace, Stability was definitely the union, that was true. Prosperity across much of the continent, yes, that was happening, like David said, and um, even mentioned. And those EU ideas and principles will be crucial in ensuring that this moving on, what we're moving on now, remains successful. And that's what Ms. May, our friend here, is trying to negotiate, <laughs> have that opportunity to negotiate our way through. Still trading with them, we would have to come down to our knees at some point, but we would doubt this is Brexit, and Brexit is Brexit now, so we, there's no going back. As a campaign to remain during the referendum, I have a democratic political view in terms of respecting other people's view. That's why we're here, that's what we're doing. And, and then, again, it's, it's passion. More British people voted to leave, and the EU, to leave the EU than any, anybody else. That's historical. But how that happened, again, we don't know. So it could be that the minorities that haven't got the hang of what it entails when you leave are the people that have put us in this position. But again, we have to respect their democratic rights. That's, that's what we have to do. Okay, so our Prime Minister, 
said, well, even though she might be a remainder, she, she can't, the vote has been casted, we have to kind of move on. So the determination to manifest itself is that triggering the article is a way forward, and it's, it has been done now. So we need to start looking at the department for exist, that exists for trade and investment. How are we going to put ourselves into it? So because the black ladder is about struggle. We don't want to struggle, we need to start, we, need to, we want to be focused, we want to kind of push in and see what we can benefit and how we can gain from the opportunity that is there. I believe there's, David Woods agree and everybody else are trading in Nigeria and in any other part of Africa would agree that there's a lot of opportunity in Nigeria. We haven't explored that opportunity. Maybe this is the time to start looking at that. That's, that's one way of looking at the whole thing. Uh, what someone, there's one disappointment is another, uh, I, can't, I can't remember how they say that idea, when you have such a support. Uh, it's obsessive. And then, you know, when somebody got forbid, when somebody fought, somebody else will rise from that. So maybe that's how we should be looking at the youth and what is happening within that. And start pushing up, making up our mind. There's no going back. It's like a dead body. Yes, I had that in the Bible, which Jesus is the wake of the dead. But at this particular time, this dead body is kind of, it's not the kind of spiritual one that we're expecting. So it's, it's a political thing. And it has to happen, it's happening. So we need to start looking at how we're going to push on and start looking at the opportunity that is there. So I think I'm going to have to move on to another thing now. So enough of talking, I'm sure that uh, all the intelligent ladies and gentlemen over there who want to ask questions. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and actually, I'm oh, sorry. Can I say something? Yes, yes. I, I think that, and I feel very strongly about this. Um, so, <coughs> Councillor Suzanne is a politician. Yes. Okay. So, and she has information about things going on on the ground that they're doing. But, for us as a community, we are where we are. We need to engage ourselves, we need to change our thinking to Brexit. If there's anybody in this, in our community that sees things stay, then that person is living in the 20, in the 18th century as far as I'm concerned. Today, in the United Kingdom, we are exiting, okay? Regardless of whether it happens or it doesn't happen. We need to adjust our thinking so that we can take advantage and we can position ourselves as a community uh, properly so that we, we, we benefit from the environment that we live in. If we're taking stay when the country is talking Brexit, then we're losing out. That's my take. Thank you very much. Um, I think I'm going to have to invite the all past politicians uh, in this whole uh, issue. Remember, we're here because the Black Ladder. <laughs> Is, a, is an experience of someone, a struggle, and uh, a survivor and everything else. So we need to kind of start looking at how we don't want that to happen. It's a story now. How do we make most of this kind of historical um, issue and then step up and go into the, and, and start encouraging our children, Asians. I don't know what, how they do with less. You see granddad that's never been educated. You see a granddad that's never been a, a shopkeeper, and their generation is moving into becoming a doctor. The, you can never see, how do you, can you see a young generation of Asians in any uh, rowdy or nursery job, they're, 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 very, they're very strategic in thinking, okay, I haven't made it, but I'm sure that my son in Nigeria is, is actually pulling the economy together. That's the mindset that we have to have, rather than thinking, okay, Nigeria, okay, bumper, yes, there's no NEPA. NEPA will come, but we need to think about how we need to get NEPA back to Nigeria. And I'm talking about bulk electricity. And in every other African, Kenya, Zimbabwe. So I'm going to hand over to, um, we decided to even give us a little bit more of what, what you <coughs> Well, um, I mean, when I, when I wrote the book and I came up with this theme for this discussion, I mean, uh, we're going to open it up to the general to the one minute, yeah, we'll just kind of yeah, yeah, so I would like to hear your views. Mm -hmm. But my view is that with Brexit, what we seem to have got <coughs> is a growth of xenophobia. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of people who voted to leave the European Union did so because they do not like the fact that Eastern Europeans who work harder, who work longer hours, who do better jobs, are getting work which they have taken for granted. Now, you know the old saying, first of all, they came for the Jews, and I did not talk because I was not a Jew. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not talk because I was not a trade unionist. And then by the time they came for me, there was no one left for me. The way I see it, those people who hate Eastern Europeans today, tomorrow, they're going to come for me and you. So at the back of our minds, we should bear in mind that there may be opportunities, as um, David has suggested, 
but there may be a backlash. You understand? What happens if the British economy contracts by 5 to 6? You could get a growth in xenophobia, you could get a growth in um, a violent attack. Who are going to be the victims? Who are going to be the subjects? You and me. So, um, you know, as we open the discussion, I would like to know what your experience has been with regards to the atmosphere, the general atmosphere in the post-Brexit era. Um, personally, I have a few fears, but hopefully I'm mistaken and they won't come to pass. Now, it's time for the intelligence uh, people around here to throw your question in and let's drop, um, I won't say drop brain, no, no, not brainstorm, because we're not allowed to use that kind of time anymore. What do we want to, what does anyone to take? We take three questions of partners. Um, thank you very much. Um, I have one question, and then I have um, something you know, prompting I can answer to us as a community. The first question, we, I, I respect the rule of law, and I respect the voting of the people. People have their different opinions, whether to stay or to leave. We did a valid and legal referendum. And the results were clear. We have to move on with that. that that's it. Whether you, I, I don't understand what people are saying that maybe Brexit is not going to happen. I know that because this is a historical moment within the EU. This is somebody or a, a, a country who set something in motion. And the powers that be, you know, they, they are going to want to control whoever does that. But, you know, when you step out the first time from a cage, you know, they're, they're going to want cage you down there. I can see you, you, you know, bullying and all that, you know, right? And, and I, I am actually quite annoyed at some people actually taking a court case against the people's votes. They are voted. You have to take, this is a, a you know, a, a country where you have to just listen to the law. That's one aside. Secondly, um, one of our, some of our panel members mentioned about our mentality. I can see the difference between our children and, and our generation. If uh, an Indian goes and abuses a Nigerian, they tell you, we're born here. <laughs> what do you want to do? I'll take you out. So everybody knows we're we are all born here. But we, we have that mentality, and then we don't interact with the community. I've seen people in the community, or let me talk about, let's, let, let's just talk about church. Once you see a church, it's Nigerians, 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 before you even see a Ghanaian or whatever, you see other people, Ghanaians, Ghanaians, Ghanaians. We just want, you won't see white people. We don't interact. And sometimes I talk to people and, you know, they're always saying things about their people. I said, you are in this country. You have to integrate. If you don't integrate, they're going to, you know, look at you like, because they don't know you. You're just keeping to yourself. When you start, con you know, integrating in the community, you start having a different level of thinking. Don't just come here and say, oh, you've got care work and this and that, and you're sending money home, and that's it. A lot of our people, that's our mentality. You have to integrate. You have to be rooted here. If you're not rooted here, you're just going to be, you know, this is what I'm managing here, and your mind is there because you're not rooted. You cannot serve two masters. So I want us to start from, you know, making headway in the community, Go into politics, you know, give our viewpoints, even as a Christian, you change, you know, you, you cannot change the society by just staying by yourself. You need to go out and, you know, talk to people, let people know you. And another thing I want to say, when you have integrity, I'm telling you, everything will be, will be okay. When we're known as a people of integrity, that we have integrity, we need to start talking to ourselves within ourselves. All this, do everything the right way. It ends up, it might look long, but actually it takes shorter. Thank you so much. Anywhere, any place, any time. So we need to be aware. Usually when you have any position, they like to test you. 
money, fraud, people come in and set you up. So that's what we need to be bearing in mind as the late, as the late uh, one of us said. Ms. Roe, okay? Yeah, I just wanted to say one thing, and one thing very quickly. A lot of people are here because we want to celebrate IO yes. and the book launch. Mm -hmm. I'm standing behind, I'm hearing the murmurs. Mm -hmm. But the point of the panel is to talk about the opportunities that the current situation presents itself and how best we, as a community, are going to grasp those opportunities. Thank you that, that just proves how important the murmurings are. <laughs> <laughs> Keep murmuring. So, we should ask about the book. Ask a question. Any more questions? Yes, you can uh, Ashley um, um, within the context of uh, uh, post Brexit era and uh, the opportunities um, or the uh, so the opportunities of African community, uh, community as African generally, uh, I think uh, is a great. Uh, we, we stand to gain a lot from Brexit. Um, personally, I have the view that. Um, the community where we are living. We as Africans, or, or, or the majority of us Nigerians anyway, we are here not only to, we, we have one of the reasons for coming down here, I mean for resettlement, I mean to, to come and settle down in this part of the world. We are the kind of people who are actually, you know, in, in keeping ourselves, you know, to excel. And then, um, okay. Brexit, it means, it's supposed to be an uh, advantage for the country. I mean, for, I mean the, the food was actually conducted uh, at the, the general of the, the British community and the uh, everyone voted to leave. It is in within, we, uh, as you, as my, as the, uh, the author of the, today's uh, book, uh, uh, Black Lives Age, it's a kind of a phobia anyway. It may be born out of phobia, but it's generally an idea that the whole of people in this country that they wish what they actually they want. It is, it's a kind of autonomy. Talk about the government governance. We, we I think, um, think, uh, think for instance, um, some of us who are actually uh, immigrants who are working in this part of the, the, this country, we felt intimidated when we see other other immigrants from other parts of the world, maybe Asia or from uh, uh, European as well. But, it brings about competitiveness because uh, when you see other people coming from other places, I mean, maybe we are uh, 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 find ourselves struggling to attain uh, or to, to, to develop something works. It will propel us to actually develop our, our, our skill sets and be able to compete uh, very well. So um, it's an advantage for us to, to for us to you know, see some opportunities. In other words, we've seen uh, in terms of. Uh, Job opportunities as well, and even trade also, because uh, I think Brexit uh, offers uh, is going to be when everything is uh, negotiation is being done or is going to be done, it's going to be a way of uh, uh, this country you know, extending trade opportunities to other parts of the world, which I think I will definitely get to a lot more. Thank you. Thank you. Your point is very valid. Uh, we're just trying to be here you know, with timing here. We, we don't know. We don't want to be kicked out, so we're trying to kind of stick to the time and let's try to. Refocus, like Ronke said, we're here. Is a question about our position in Brexit in light of the book and the character of the book. So let's try to stay within that. Where everybody is valid, valid. The gentleman there, and I promise you, will listen. And then we can then have the question back. I don't have a question there, I don't see the question, so I can throw it back to the other. Good evening, my name is Greg Ekato. Uh, and um, congratulations, Ayo. Now, I got a question for the panel. I happen to agree with the council that, you know, as even uh, in, in as much as you say Brexit here, yeah, Brexit there, yeah, Brexit is not quite clear. The Prime Minister has given a hard Brexit. But what do you think now that Tony Blair put his, his heart in the ring, even though he's not going to be a politician, uh, an active politician, but, you know, to impress, to midwife, what Brexit will look like when it happens. Because you can't go for a hard Brexit when Brexit is not yet defined. So I want to know what your thoughts are here and how 
we Nigerians or Africans can actually take advantage of what this meaning, this definition of what it will mean can be harnessed. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. Um, I think if we go back to the earlier speech by various uh, panelists, we spoke about the benefits of being in Brexit, and then we spoke about what is in Nigeria, and um, we've had it, but I'll just recap. And as, as part of the outcome of this Brexit, which, according to the Prime Minister, we no longer are divided, we're no longer divided by our votes and how we cast it and what we cast, how we decide on to, to be living, to live or to remain. What is happening right now and the benefit to us that two cabinet offices have been established. One is looking at EU, the other one is looking at EU and the Brexit, the other one is looking at international trade. So we we have one feature because like you said, if someone doesn't know what will happen, we have to have a plan A, B and C. If this doesn't work, to gain on British exit. Then the second question is to uh, the mayor. Um, what has the EU has done for the United Kingdom? Thank you. What has the EU has done for the United Kingdom? Yeah, okay. I mean, I think anybody in the panel wants to take that. Well, directly to David. Oh, to David. Oh, sorry. What is the city? City. I'm talking about. Got to lose and got to win. Yeah. Up until about 30 odd years ago, the city of London was the world's greatest financial centre. And. It had done that over, it become that over many hundreds of years of being an important element of international trade. So the challenge for the city is to reassert itself as a center for international trade. Now, if you're managing a bank, do you want to be in London or do you want to be in Paris or Frankfurt? You probably want to be in both. And when we look forward at 
what is going to be the change where we can't rely, I, I hesitate to say this on this august panel, but we can't rely on politicians because they spend so much time talking about what they might or might not do and not enough time on getting on and doing what they need to do that we can't recognize that there will be a deal with, with Europe. You know, there might be an argument. That deal may not be safe. So we have to go out and find new markets, and that's an essential element. And for the city, it's important that they strengthen the, 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 the international relations that they already enjoy, and look at how those new markets bring new opportunities. There is no greater new market than what's happening in Africa at the moment. Let's not talk about Africa now, or Africa of 10 years ago, or even 20 years ago. Let's talk of Africa next year, or five years' time, or 10 years' time, when all the positive thinking that is going on around development and the creation of local value turns into millions and millions of dollars of international trade, some of which will come through the city. So it's two sides of a very fine line. It can go well on both sides or it can go badly on both sides, but unless you're working both sides, it's not going to go at all. Thank you so much. Um, can I ask Susan uh, to respond? And the response would be, I'll be, very, I'll be very brief. The first response that I want to make, I've forgotten the lady's name, who, was, who said, uh, uh, there was a court case challenging Brexit. Just a correction, there was no court case challenging Brexit. What the court case was, there was never any challenge against whether the votes are valid or whether it's 48% to 52%. That it is valid. What was challenged was the deception around Brexit. So that is that. Uh, secondly, what I want to say uh, re in response to the author about where we are and how do we move forward and how do you move forward this Brexit, there's nothing gentleman said there at this moment, what Brexit is, is just a word on paper, there is no Brexit, there will be negotiation and that negotiation will produce uh, a, a document and that document, what is uh, the opportunity that is up? Uh, is, is available to us as a community, is for all the way the EU citizens are forming together for African people to be able to form together and be part and have a voice into those negotiations. That is the way we can move it. And finally, to my brother here, I will just pick on one thing because I know our people are pinching me all over. And it's just the employment right. You said what has EU done for, uh, 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 for this country. And I'll just pick on it. Majority of the employment legislation in this country are from the EU, starting from the agency, the 2 p right, the uh, discrimination right, that people will say, oh, I was discriminated at work, I'm going to court. All those are EU legislation, and we can lose all those. I'm not given the opportunity to speak. We just have another discussion. Maybe Parliament discuss this in full because I think we're all having that dieting. Yeah. On, the, on the black ladder, we'll have a discussion about it. So watch out and then we can have a full. We can call ministers to come and give us more guidance. And we'll be happy if we can join together and actually be organized a meeting That's what in the next. Uh, one, two months. No, a month. It's, on it's going to be too late because it, we ate some juice. Follow this conversation. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's look up for that. I will promise I'm going to find a space in our parliament so we can have a full discussion because I'm, I'm worried about this and I want us to have, I don't want us to have that very, um, very, you know, let's get it, let's get our mind cleared up and let's, let's have the discussion. So I'd like to call the chief law because we're here. Remember, for <laughs> us. You guys have to finish because we have just limited time. Yes, we're just doing it just now. So okay, we're so here for please. one reason, and the reason is the black ladder. So we're going to call the chief launcher of the group right now and uh, to come up and um, give us the. Yeah?
Introducing the chief launcher, who's going to talk about the book. That's the reason we're all here to celebrate Ayo's birthday as well. Um, his name is Chief. I'm sorry, Mr. Sonny Anhonse. Anhonse. Is it Chief? No, 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 Chief. No. Okay. <laughs> That's Mr. Sonny. Chief Doctor Professor and all of the above. All the reason. All the reason. Okay. Global Angel Award Global Education. So please give him a round of applause. Can we have a little chair for uh, Mr. Ronson? Yes. Before you stand it up. No, 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 no. I'll stand it. Sure. No, no, no. More active. Good evening, everyone. Absolutely brilliant to be here this evening and also to see all the beaming faces. Now, I've heard earlier a lot about discussing politics, Brexit, 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 <laughs> all of it. I am not a politician, but I'm a money manager. I work with people to manage their money effectively. That's what I do. I do what is called economic empowerment. I, I do not preach about equal opportunity, but I, 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 I promote or I celebrate what I call equal, equal diversity. Yeah, giving opportunity to everyone else. My grandmother once said, he said, to survive in Britain, in any country for that matter, you need two things. In this country particularly, your brain or your color. If you have both, you stay in a very strategic position. If you have one of them, you will survive. Life is all about adding value to people's lives. If you want to make money, there's one fundamental thing you need to do. What is it? Yeah. Give somebody a value. In return, they'll be willing to pay you any handsome amount. That's what this book is all, is all about. Does this book not also illustrate, for some of you who have actually had the overview, about the tenacity it might take somebody, isn't it? The journey, the topography, the difficulties, the complexity that life actually presents, whether you're a man or a woman. But more pertinent to a man of different color, of different race, there are, I say to people, many times over, there are difficulties in any, any country you go to. Correct? Yes. yes. There are discrimination in any country you go to. Yeah. We all have our own preferences, as we are here. We like different football, or whatever it is, different games, and all the rest of the color. If you go to Nigeria, or you go to Ghana, or Cameroon, or whatever it is, there are divisions everywhere. But we don't celebrate division, we celebrate cohesion. Now, this book today, for me, as far as what I'm saying, I am wonderful. Please give him a round of applause. <laughs> this is not a cliche that I want to use to dis discourage anyone else. Some popular opinion of theorists, they say, look, if you want to hide away any information from a black person, as a cliche it might be it, the fact is, without patronizing anyone, is for us to build a habit of reading, documenting information. 
Personally, I have gained a lot from this book already. That's why as a launcher, I will encourage everybody to pick copies. But in order not to exhaust the whole shelf, I'm not going to take all of them. I promise you I will reserve some of them for you. As a launcher, I will be taking six of these books. The book is not only just being taken for the sake of it, but I know quite fundamentally it's going to help and assist a lot of people. It's a book that actually illustrates resilience. How you can actually, I'm not sure any of you here have ever, ever read a book written by, or the biography of Nkwame Krumah. Anyone here? Yes. If you haven't, I will help you. The information relating to surgery here is very identical. Going through a lot of uh, difficult times. And in recent time, I watched a film, I think it's called, not the Moonlight, the other one, Lion. Did you watch Lion? Lion was a, just a, a very young Indian guy who had actually gone through a lot of difficulties a lot of times. See, they're calling me now, my mom. <laughs> See? Women. At the wrong time, they were called. But for the right thing. Okay, so it's all up now. So, what the book was all about, very basically, is how you survive through adversity. And I'm sure a lot of us will actually benefit and glean the essential ingredient that are pertinent in relation to life itself. Okay? Not just about the book itself. For the lesson that it teaches. So, I your congratulations, and we look forward to reading more of this. Year. So, give my book, six of them. Give our two boys a round of applause. Thank you all, guys, for once again for all coming. Now, I want to see who's going to be able to beat him. He's got six books. And I want somebody to stand up, and you can use this as a Christmas present. You can have it as, you know, somebody's birthday present. I can tell you, I've read the book myself. It's absolutely fantastic. It's one of, it's a UK number one seller. If I'm not right, I'm wrong, I it. Yes? And we're hoping that, you know, since we Nigerians are getting the positivity, we should encourage one another. So I want to see who's going to beat that six. Please, somebody should get up and, you know, six, he's taking six. We want someone that can take 10, we want someone that can take 12. Don't just sit here. You guys can just come to the beach You can sell it on Amazon, now. you can sell it, you're a good seller, you can offer it on Amazon, and sorry. You need to come to eat your meat pie now. Eh? I want you all to get up and support Ayo. Hey, oh, okay, my brother. How much would you like to take? I'd like to take five. Uh, thank you very much. We have our lovely brother here who's taking five. Anyone else? Wow. Yes, sir. I've just done a quick count. Okay. Aberdeen, Edinburgh, Newcastle, Manchester, Ooh. Leeds, Birmingham, Yay. Oxford, Peterborough, Sussex, Croydon. Sorry. Now, you guys may think that you're the African community in the UK, <laughs> but the 80-20 rule, or maybe the 70-30 rule, suggests that if 70% are in London, 30% are outside. We're building networks in all these places, so I will take one book for each network Whoa. for the direction. So I will go for your chance. On that note, on that note, on that note, well, may I welcome you all once again? <laughs> if you've just arrived, a round of applause. You missed it. <laughs> um, we know you had to go to work, uh, hence your lateness. But for coming late, I'll begin to identify certain individuals. To so come and pick up, no, they, they don't get fined. Um, you, you get fined in a nice way. But if this book is actually going to those places, then I'd like to encourage you from there to begin to file down here and pick one up, one 
each yes. and go back to your seats. Then you get back to uh, my tall, handsome, and warm. Exactly. All right. Can I take off my network and I'll, I'll do more? And I, I can beat the. Uh, I can, can beat the launcher. Thank you. Very so much. Yeah. That's Sorry, that's the that's the idea of the game. Thank you very much. This is our bookseller here. Um, okay. Um, you know what? Thank you very much. And there's more. <laughs> and it's a good big game. Like for everybody that is oh, buying or oh, having a chance. Oh, uh, please. I know people who can't run away here. Uh, Nobody can run away right here. Okay. Of course. Uh, wait, 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 wait. May I call on? May I call on? You see, ladies and gentlemen. Of course. We take anything. Even in churches, they take cards. <laughs> so here, we can take cards. Um, I'm standing here in front of... One second. I'm standing here in front of a big brother of mine. He's an African icon, an Algerian icon. In fact, in the last few months, you, or few weeks, you would have seen him with the richest king in Africa. That is the, his imperial majesty, the Orni of Ife. Please, don't dispute that. <laughs> May I call on my big brother, the Anyo himself, the man who talks with a drum. Yes! He is now going to talk with his money. <laughs> so I brought several copies just before him. So he can do whatever he wants to do with them. Well, good evening, everybody. Okay. Right, what I'm going to do is just to take five at 20 pounds each. Oh! Excuse me. Excuse me, everyone. Can I have a bon again round of applause? <laughs> Thank you very much. We can count it. One, two, three. We have Debbie sitting in the corner of my eye. That's that day. Ah, in fact, sis, don't worry. Yeah, they are one day out. They are all day. I do. If I come past, you don't think you've escaped. Sis. Um, I should I should actually go to Uncle before I come to you, but I love your afro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking I'm talking about you. I should go to him first. Of course. Um, may I introduce May I introduce uh, our MBE, um, Miss. Debbie Ario, a round of applause for all ladies and gentlemen. She's in our midst. And I've come with very limited copies. Come on, Debbie. So, um, just, uh, just about six. I'm sure she'll need more, so please get ready. <laughs> so, sis, over to you. We, we have. Oh, you see? No, no problems. Uh, do, do Royal Charter. Royal Charter. One of round of applause. We're not here to embarrass anybody, honestly. We're not doing that at all. But we, we're here for a purpose and we need to support each other. And this charity begins at home. Okay? You can go to, you can take people out for a meal. We do random meal things. My, my, within my second case, spent 200 pounds. Let's support our own. This is what is about. So we're not embarrassing anyone. Do what you can. Do as much as 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 you can. Do I've taken six books to her. I know she's capable of more. 
So um, I've deliberately taken six to her, uh, even though I know she's capable of more. She's an MBE. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lady here who, like every one of us, has been through adversities. She's been through a very difficult time, and she's come through it. And she's a wonderful, uh, a very wonderful source of inspiration to a lot of us who are friends. May I call on none other than lady who makes special cakes. She's, she's, she's amazing with our cake making skills. Please welcome with me none other than whatever cakes. <laughs> God bless you, ma'am. You look amazing, by the way. Okay, we have two more books. Oh, please. Um, a round of applause for David, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, we haven't got much time. Um, you see, when you have here the leader of engineers in Nigeria, oh, yeah, Nigerian engineers, oh sorry, engineers of Nigerian descent, in the UK, their leader, the boss, go, 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 is right here. So please, a round of applause for Uncle Boma, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, of course, our leader in waiting. Please yes. give us some shirt. Um, this is how many copies? Please, can, can we make it ten? Four more copies. Four more. Can our sister have? Can his twin sister? His twin sister work. Two before. So, 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 yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. Okay, thank you so much. Please, a round of applause to them, ladies and gentlemen. May I submit to you, may I submit to you that in our community in the UK, as Nigerians, we have, we have had the need for a leader like Uncle Boma. Mm, yep, yep. Most especially in, in the recent times, two years, we have had a need for such leadership that we know that he will give us. So we're very happy, we're elated that he's here and he's going to be our leader. Yeah. I, I say that, I say that, I say that because I've got knowledge of our recent two years and it has not been very nice. May I submit to you that these people, Uncle Boma and of course his wife, are the first people at your events. No matter what you do, they're there for you. And these are the people who have shown leadership even in times of difficulty, even when it's most inconvenient for them. So a round of applause to them. Please, can I have five books? Five books for my boss. For my boss. Chief, let me just finish quickly, then I'll come to you after. Chief, Chief Zone has to be special. Well, this books. Um, would be for my boss, my mentor. None other, he knows himself, none other than Uncle Charles Kiri.
Okay. Um, yes. I'm, I'm going to uh, shift now. Where's those five? Five for Mr. Charles Kieran. Exactly. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, the next victim. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That was a sleep of my tongue. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. May I, may I, may I, may I say something very quickly? You see, you see, leadership. Sometimes my dad used to say to me, "Is um, inherited. Sometimes it is bestowed on you. Sometimes God just decides." He's going to put you somewhere, and he gives you the opportunity, the, the strength, the ability to, to lead people naturally. And that is what I found in none other than Chief Bimbo Robert Falaya. Oh, yes. Please, Please a round of applause. I never met him until very much uh, later, but this is a man who led our community in the right direction, even though we've been taken backwards a few years. But he led us, and we could see that we had a leader. So please, a round of applause, because this man actually made Canuck what it is today. What it was until two years ago. Uh, stop saying that. <laughs> um, yes, I'll keep emphasizing that. No, stop it. Don't do it. Okay, maybe I'll stop. Maybe. Uh, maybe I will. Maybe. Okay, please, a round of applause for those people. Um, I brought, um, I brought about six copies. I know you would want more, but this is just for testers. We're not fasting. So I bought, I bought one before, so that that will be seven deal now. I can do this seven deal. The only thing I want to say is that one thing I want to say here, please attention, Mr. Celebrant. Are you acting fair? It's a word smith. He manufactures words. If you don't buy this book and even give to people, you'll be missing and people will be missing. Honestly, it's a man who analyzes virtually everything and he, he uses the right words. He's a super writer. I never miss any one of his writings. But also about the community, I want to say to us that our community is a work in progress. Okay, so we, we have a long way to go and things will only get better. And by the grace of God, we see things getting better in the future. So all of us have to, you know, work together, let's collaborate, work with the new team that is coming on board. And they'll move our communities to the next level. Thank you so much.
Somebody was shouting for people to stop talking. Please let us respect each other. There was a minister here from the Nigerian High Commission who came to celebrate Ion. Unfortunately, she had to leave, but we give a round of applause for her presence for the Nigerian High Commission. And I was, huh? She's in charge of information. Sorry about that. The minister in charge of information and culture from the Nigerian High Commission. This event was scheduled to start at six. So we are where we are, and it doesn't mean that we shouldn't applaud ourselves for being here. And every hand, every step that people have taken or shown towards Ayo, there's a round of applause for you all. A round of applause. Everybody. So, um, like I said, I'm not mentioning names, though, you know, because if I mention one name, I won't be able to mention the other name. But the most important thing is that everybody, and I stress, Everybody has played a role in the production of this book. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh. There's, still, there's still a few books here for sale. Uh, I'm told I'm supposed to pick it up. I'm not too good at this. What am I supposed to do? Uh, you want to buy it? Uh, okay. in terms of um, the book launch for our London-based veteran, author and journalist, um, Ayu Akipe, The Black Ladder. This was um, brought to you by Nigeria Diaspora. I hope you've all enjoyed it. It's been a long day, but the most important thing is um, you know, the book itself uh, must be purchased by everybody. Black Ladder is one thing you must have in your collection. Your children must read this book. Uh, this is to um, you know, give us the insight of what a lot of us have gone through in terms of living here in the United Kingdom. I hope uh, you've enjoyed it uh, as much as I have enjoyed it as well. Uh, there's so many you know, faces down here. I'm sure everyone has um, been able to listen to those that spoke about the opportunity that will be arising from the big exit uh, and the most important thing is um, uh, we are going to be bringing more people to speak to us in terms of um, that big exit you know what are the opportunities for every one of us you know there's so much opportunity like i've said so many times but this event was brought to you uh, by Nigeria diaspora one hub connecting everybody together we are live on, the, we're on Facebook, Nigeria Diaspora. We are also on Twitter, Nigeria Diaspora. And we also do a lot of uh, you know, agriculture and food. You know, most important thing is you must be able to empower yourself. Uh, we do share a lot of news and information. If you want us to uh, come down and transmit live to Facebook and to the audience of what you do, 
get in touch with me, send me an inbox, I will definitely be there. Watch out for the next event. But today, we are celebrating one man, uh, you know, the most important veteran and journalist within the Nigerian community, uh, Ayo Akife, the Black Ladder. Hard copies are available for grabs now. You know, get in touch with myself, and then you'll be able to get a copy. Uh, also, get in touch with um, Ayo Akife. He's on Facebook. You know, you can send him a message, and the book will be picked up. Um, you know, at the nearest location. You know, also, I'm sure a lot of us have heard from the speakers tonight the opportunity that will be coming up in terms of. Um, you know, the brick exit that is actually taking place. But one thing we've got to remember is you must pull together, we must work as a community, you must unite. Uh, and we're back again with another beautiful event, you know, very soon to your doorstep. But this event was brought to you today by Niger Diaspora, one hub connecting the community together. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Ola Yomi Koike. Thank you and God bless.